Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today I've got an interesting review for you guys that I'm actually kind of excited about doing. And why is that, you'd ask? Well, it's because it's of a spotting scope. Now, for those of you guys that watch my channel or know me, you guys know that I've owned over 100 telescopes of all different styles and designs, more accessories than you could count. So I'm kind of an astro nerd, uh, and actually it's kind of surprising I've actually never owned a spotting scope, so I'm kind of excited about it. Now, for the non-astro nerds out there, you're like, well, you know, why, why am I the one that's doing this review, right? Well, I mean, having the experience with so many different types of optics, I mean, I, I do know how to evaluate the optical you know characteristics of any telescope i mean essentially this thing is just like an astronomy telescope except it's in a smaller package that's made to be lugged around easier so a company called mid 10 uh sent this thing to me for a review it's not like a paid review or anything like that besides them just sending it to me um, uh, so I'm going to give it this fair shakedown. I, I do have a, you know, a decent view of the mountains here from my house. Um, I'll try to get it out into the woods and actually use it, you know, kind of like in the, in the setting that it's made to be used for. Um, but actually, you know, the other thing that I really want to see is if this thing is actually capable of being used for astronomy and just kind of like out of the curiosity factor for myself. So this thing has an 80 millimeter objective. Uh, that's like that front lens, uh, the magnification on that is from uh, 20 to uh, 80 power. All right, now let's get that to the unboxing and check this thing out. We'll see what's inside. So we'll open up the box here. And so, you know, basic cardboard box. And then uh, in here, it looks like it comes with a carrying case. So um, instruction manual, that's cool. Hopefully we won't need that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so here's the scope itself. Uh, so there's a rubber band. Let's see if I can wrestle this sucker off here. All right. So the telescope itself, the spotting scope. So here she is. So basically the way that these are designed to work is you can put this on any camera tripod, right? So it's got the standard tripod uh, adapter. Um, if you have a telescope type of mount, this is not like a standard dovetail, not like a Vixen type of dovetail. So you would need to add a little dovetail to that. That's kind of more of a telescope type of thing. Uh, objective is definitely coated on this thing. So basically what that means is that it has anti-reflection coatings to where it'll give you better performance. And that looks very nice actually. And then this is the eyepiece, which is essentially a zoom eyepiece. Okay. So now that's the scope. Let's see what else is in the, in the box here. Okay, yeah, so this thing does come with a uh, cell phone adapter. So later on, we'll check this out, see how this thing works. And a little cleaning cloth for your both the eyepiece and the front objective there. And it comes with a small tabletop tripod. So this is not a tripod that you're probably going to be using on the ground. I mean, you could put it like on your vehicle or on a deck or on like a table or something like that. And it looks like that's all the stuff that's included. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are photographing a bald eagle in its natural environment. You're like, what bald eagle? I see Z Vlad. Well, let me try to zoom in here. See that tree out there? That black speck on there? That's a bald eagle, actually. He comes out here pretty often. I'm gonna try to photograph him uh, before he flies away. So I've got the scope set up, right? In its default configuration. This is the setup going on right here with the video rolling. I'm actually using my uh, little girl's iPad to record this. So the video quality is probably not going to be that great. Pardon the unprofessionalism, but I had to kind of capture this for you guys. So there's the ball eagle being recorded, right? Uh, on the camera, and I'm using the adapter that came with this little spotting scope and you know it's actually working fairly well i mean 
pretty impressed. The tripod actually works decently well too. I'll kind of talk more about the tripod later. But anyhow, there's the bald eagle sitting out there. And we are capturing him live with the camera here through the spotting scope. Alrighty guys and gals, so, you know, you can't make it up, okay? I was just videotaping nature in action. That's all I gotta say, but <laughs> anyhow, um, so the bald eagle that we saw earlier was sitting out in that tree out there. And so today is obviously a different day. And we actually have good weather. Now for all you folks that live down south in like Arizona and all of them, states that have great weather all the time you're like you know what's the big deal well you know come here to the northwest uh, after you experience rain for like two or three months straight you'll see how big of a deal it is so it's just beautiful to them and yeah, so i got the scope set up right um, i am just going to point it out a few things you know this is probably like 30 40 miles away you know uh, that's mount st helens out there in the uh, distance um, and, you know, we'll just kind of see uh, what we can pick up. First, I'll probably start to point out some stuff on the other side of the lake out there. And then uh, we'll kind of work our way further out and I'll, you know, I'll try to get some video footage through the scope. So let's check it out. All right, and then, you know, just in case it's not obvious, so this is not the tripod that comes with it. This is actually usually the tripod that I use to hold my uh, camera, that, you know, for recording videos and stuff. So fairly lightweight. I mean, this is, like, lighter than really most cheap camera tripods would be, and it actually works really well with the spotting scope. So you really don't need to be if you have a tripod. You know, chances are if you got an old tripod kicking around somewhere in a closet, it will hold the scope just fine. And again, any photo, camera type of tripod will work just fine. So that's, uh, I'm going to kind of start taking a few looks. So expanded the dew shield. And, oh yeah, let's take the cool shades off. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to look at a couple of things and I'll kind of give you guys my kind of like initial thoughts and then we'll kind of switch to the camera mode so i'm looking at the trees that are close by here these are probably roughly a mile away very sharp image and i am at 20x right now so um so turning the zoom mechanism it, it's you know it's smooth but it is kind of on the stiffer side i don't know if it's going to get looser you know as you use it more uh, image is very sharp though. I don't see any, you know, anything wrong with the image here. Let me focus here. Having the two-speed focus here is really nice, especially at the high power. At the low power, it doesn't really matter. Okay, yeah, so at the 20, uh, 20 X setting, I really couldn't see any secondary color, like if that chromatic aberration I was talking about. Uh, a higher power you can't see it, so at 60x I could see it on the tree, you know, fairly easily. Again, I'm, I'm really into optics, so for me it's really easy to tell. Um, you know, most people would probably not even be able to tell that it's there, but, you know, I'm just giving you guys kind of a fair shakedown of this thing. Image is fairly sharp. I'd say at the 60x setting, um, you know, we are looking pretty far away, so we're actually looking through quite a bit of air. Uh, but fairly sharp image, I mean, it's definitely softer than where the trees were. But still very nice, though. I mean, it provides you a nice view. Mount St. Helens, and, you know, I've been up there quite a few times. Does it look like as good as, you know, when you're by it? No, but it's really cool, though, to check out. You know, like the snowpack and the peaks and that type of thing. So, yeah. Um, let me actually zoom out a little bit and see how it's going to look like. Okay, so. Yeah, I'd say going down. So, just overall going down to even the 50X uh, setting versus the 60X. You do get quite a bit sharper image. Um, 
So yeah, so now I'm gonna attach the camera adapter and we'll try to take a few pictures so you guys kind of get an idea of, you know, what you could capture picture-wise with the scope. Alrighty guys, so here's the live view through the spotting scope. So this is roughly, you know, the same distance. We're looking at trees. Um, and this is at the 20X setting through the scope. Um, with the high power uh, lens on my phone. <laughs> So I'm not really sure what magnification that really ends up at, and it really doesn't matter. Just, you know, I'm just doing this to kind of give you guys an idea of what's possible. So these are trees. Um, pretty sharp. I mean, you know, as you can see, I mean, there's a good amount of detail. And this is actually where having that two-speed focuser um, really comes in handy. It is a lot easier to focus with the two-speed, especially when you're kind of using the higher powers. Uh, so here's kind of those, or actually I guess, yeah, let, let me show you guys a view of the other side of the lake, I guess, and then we'll look at the mountains. Alright, so there's the lake, right? And then uh, let's try to look at the other shore a little bit through the trees there. Alright, so these are the trees that are on the other side of the lake, and this is, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know honestly, but this has got to be like probably a good five miles away so pretty in focus actually I don't think I even have to adjust the focus let me try to tweak it yeah it looks in focus so yeah a good amount of detail I mean you know shoot if you're using this like for hunting because I think that's one of the things they kind of advertise this as you know I mean, I think you'd be able to see game out there. I mean, not like a rabbit or something, but if there was like deer or elk or, elk or something like that, I think you'd be able to see that. Obviously, going further away, like them trees out there, that's probably, I don't know, like 10 miles away, you know, something like that. You probably wouldn't be able to see game, you know, especially not in the trees. I mean, if it was just kind of out in the field, then maybe. But yeah, let's take a look at something that's really far away. So this is, uh, I think Mount St. Helens about 30 miles away as the crows fly, as they say, you know. Um, and so these little mountains, mountain range that kind of goes up to it are, you know, about the same distance. So we are checking stuff out roughly 30 miles away right now. And as you can see, so the tree that's in front, right, it's not really in focus, but what I'm trying to focus on is not on that. I'm trying to focus Let's see, like now it isn't focused, but I'm trying to focus on the mountain, which, you know, it's roughly right there is where it's in focus. So, yeah, like a pretty darn good amount of detail, I'd say, for something that's far away. And then here's the actual Mount St. Helens that we're getting to. So, I mean, check out the detail on, like, in the snowpack and stuff like that. You could just totally imagine there being an av avalanche going on out there, right? <laughs> And, uh, you know, there could be a very well right now. I mean, hopefully not. Well, hopefully if there is, there's no people out there. But, you know, you just never know. But, yeah, uh, that's Mount St. Helens. Let's see if we kind of get more of the peak. Of, I think it's behind a tree, though. Oh, actually, hold on. Let's get to the other side of this tree. There's more of the mountain there. Yeah, there we go. This is kind of more of the peak of the mountain right here. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, so this is basically what remains of the peak anyway because this thing erupted like you know roughly 40 years ago i believe blew its top right off hopefully it doesn't happen again <laughs> uh, so next up we are going to uh look at the moon this is one of the things that i was really curious about right is if you could use a spotting scope for astronomy and um, i just took a look at um uh star cluster that's named m45 if you're not into astronomy i'll post a picture of it in right now this is actually a picture that i took with the telescope in any case yeah um you know i was actually pretty surprised the view of uh, m45 is really cool through the through this little spotting scope i mean this is kind of uh just wide enough of a field of view to where um, you could fit the entire cluster in, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I see a, yeah, a slight amount of secondary color. Um, not a big deal though at all, especially, so, and I was uh, using it at the uh, lowest power setting when I was looking at uh, 
I'm 45. Um, but yeah, it works pretty well, pretty well. The only thing that, you know, I kind of, you know, is a downside about using a spotting scope, um, unless you, you know, you get a higher tripod, I guess, is that when I'm sitting, right, you know, when you're pointing, you know, kind of straight up or close to up, you know, you're, it's not really a, mo the, a really comfortable uh, position to be looking through, you know, it's kind of hard on your neck. Alrighty, guys, check this out. So what you're seeing actually, it's like little particles of fog uh, going through. So this is kind of testing the waterproofing of the scope, but look at what we're pointing at finally. It's the moon. Alright, so now I'm going to attempt to actually uh, record these. So let's check it out. Put in the camera on the scope. Alrighty guys, so here she is. We're recording the moon live through the scope. This is an actual video. I'm gonna try to focus it a little bit better. Um, so I've already taken a look through the telescope, like just through the eyepiece with my eye. And you know, even at the high power setting, it's actually pretty nice. I mean, you can see a lot of craters. So yeah, I man, I mean, if, especially if you're not into astronomy, and you get the spotting scope, I would really highly recommend, I mean, at least looking at the moon. I think you're going to be highly impressed. You know, if you got kids, by all means, show that to them. Alrighty, guys. So, and to conclude this and bring the ship home, what do I think about the mid-10 uh, spotting scope? Well, let's start with the accessories. And that's actually more or less uh, going from, like, you know, some of the negative things that I didn't really like about it to, like, some of the positive things. So we'll start with the tripod. Um, this thing is functional. If you do not have a different tripod, uh, this will work. Um, the, the thing is for the scope not to like kind of like flop over, this thing really has to be cranked down. Um, so, you know, you can make it work. It does work. You do need to have a table on. Chances are though, you know, if you have any type of cheap photo tripod, it will work uh, better than this. And you got to keep in mind, I mean, you're really buying the, you know, the spotting scope. You're not really, you know, paying for this. This is just kind of a throw-in type of a thing. Um, the, um... Cell phone adapter, you know, when I first saw this, I didn't have too much faith in this thing, right? <laughs> quite frankly, uh, but it actually worked out pretty well. I mean, you know, um, depending on how heavy your phone is, and my phone is actually pretty heavy for a cell phone, um, this, you know, this may or may not work, you know, like that. Well, it's actually made out of metal too. It's not like plastic, so that's kind of nice. I mean, this is plastic, um, but I mean, it's functional, uh, pretty decent, I'd say. I mean, it'll get the job done, um, so yeah. Uh, carry bag, you know, it's basic. There's a couple of compartments in here. There's a shoulder strap, not too much to this, and you know, it's functional. It doesn't have too much padding though, so this is really just to kind of carry around, not really, you know, to protect it too terribly much. But, you know, I don't have too many issues with them. All right. Now we get to what we're after, right? <laughs> the spotting scope itself. Uh, so we'll kind of start from the front, work towards the back, you know. Um, First of all, optics on this, again, as I said, that's kind of my specialty. For the price point and for what you're getting, these are awesome, okay? I mean, there's really nothing wrong with them. Um, they're nice and coated. Uh, image quality is good, again, for this price point. Uh, to get, like, you know, a better spotting scope than this, you'd have to get ED optics, and, you know, they're probably like in the $600 price range and higher. Um, so this thing does have a slight induced shield. I was actually pretty impressed with that. I don't think older models have had that. Um, at least I've never seen a spotting scope uh, with one, but again, I'm not too much into them. So this is really nice actually, because it, it'll, it'll prevent some of the glare from the sun, right? Also, if there's dew or like maybe a little bit of rain falling, because this thing is uh, supposed to be waterproof. I honestly did not test that. I don't really, you know, use my optics in the rain, but like if you're hunting or like backpacking or something like that, you know, chances are if some rain falls on this, you're probably going to be fine. Again, I didn't really test this, so I can't really comment on that. Uh, kind of working towards the back. It does have a rotatable collar, right, to where you could actually, you know, like say if this is mounted on the tripod, you could adjust the angle of where, you know, the eyepiece is pointing. So that's actually pretty sweet. I really enjoy that. And this works very well. I mean, it's nice and smooth. And, you know, when you lock it down, you don't really have to crank it down. I mean, it just stays there. Okay, moving on to the focuser. This focuser is very functional. I mean, I was actually kind of surprised to find a two-speed focuser. 
uh, on the spotting scope, especially at this price point. I mean, really, I didn't even know that they made that. But anyway, yeah, so you've got the rough focus and the fine focus here. Both of them work very well, both very smooth, um, no issues there. All right, moving on to uh, the zoom eyepiece. This is kind of like my only gripe with the scope. Uh, so optics wise, this thing is actually pretty nice. It works well. It does have a adjustable eye cup guard, so you could adjust, you know, how high you want that. So that's really nice, depending on where you like your eye placed and the eye relief uh, that you're comfortable with. Uh, but uh, the actual zoom mechanism, I mean, it works well, but it's just pretty darn stiff. I mean, honestly, I've, you know, I'm, I kind of like zoom eyepieces for telescopes, and this is kind of on the stiffer side. Uh, so that's really my only gripe with this. Otherwise, I mean, construction-wise, this is very solid. I mean, there's really nothing that I do not like about this besides the stiffness on the uh, zoom eyepiece. So anyhow, hopefully you guys found this review helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. Uh, if you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.